starting. Hi there. Today I wanted to pop in and share with you about the importance of creating a sacred space for yourself, particularly if you're an empath and particularly if you have felt kind of stressed, especially about all the things that have been going on in the world lately, it's, it becomes super important to create a sacred space for yourself. And I'm going to share with you what I've done and how I've done it. And I'm going to bring you on a little tour of my own sacred space just to share that with you. So a lot of people have been spending more time at home, of course, in the last year and a half. Most of us have been stuck at home. And so while being at home, um, I feel it's even more important to create this sacred space if you're going out less. Thank goodness things are opening up. But still, when this whole COVID lockdown thing started, um, I, uh, I decided to make it my own COVID project to create my sacred space in my home. And remember, it doesn't have to be a big space. It can be just a little altar or a little corner of your bedroom or your living room. Um, I was lucky in that we had a spare room in our home, which was completely neglected. It was so it was just piling up with junk and we were traveling all the time before COVID and I was busy and I was stressed out and tired and I didn't realize how tired and stressed and busy I was until the lockdowns until we stopped and and then we were stuck at home and so here we were at home not sure what was going on not really understanding all the COVID stuff you know how things were changing every day in the beginning and so we weren't really even leaving our house much except to go buy groceries. And there's, there, was this, there is this one big room in my, in my home which was completely neglected where we had just allowed our laundry to accumulate and just stuff. So I decided at that point to make it my project to make this room into my sacred space. And, um, and so I cleared it up and then I, I started to put beautiful things in it. And I have loved, loved, loved having this room because what it does energetically, and this is so important, I believe, for empaths, what it does energetically is that if you make a commitment that in this room you're only going to, or in this space, like let's say it's a part of your room, a part of a section of your living room or your bedroom or wherever, um, you know, find, find a space that's not been taken care of and clean it up and, and, and you can make a commitment that in that space, you'll only do things like write in your journal or meditate or listen to music or, or lie down or relax and, and things. So what happens is when you condition yourself that that space is only for that, it's not for watching TV, it's not for being on your computer, it's not for answering emails, it's for none of those things, it's not for reading the news, it's not even for social media. That's my commitment in my sacred space. Everything turns off when I'm in here. What happens is now, literally, I walk into the space and I'm like, ah. I don't even need to spend time in it anymore. It's almost like a reflex action. It's like, ah, oh, this is the space where I just unwind. And, and so you don't even need, as, as time goes on, as you condition yourself that this is the space where that happens, you don't even need to spend that much time in it for you to completely decompress and unwind because it literally becomes like a reflex action when you step into that space. And this is so important for empaths. But here's the dichotomy or the irony is the less time you need to spend in it, the more time you actually crave. It's like, oh, I can't wait to get to my sacred space. I can't wait to go continue listening to my music or journaling and so on. So I completely got burned out towards the beginning of last year, 2020, actually at the start of COVID. I felt completely burned out. And so I took it as a blessing that the traveling stopped and all my events got canceled and I had to spend, I was forced to spend time at home. And in that time, I did a lot of reflecting and my two big projects, one was creating my space and clearing this room. And the second one was my project with my little patio garden, which I have shown you in a previous video where I have plants and things that I never had before during 
the last few years that I spent traveling. For me, this time of peace has really been a blessing and I never plan to go back to the life that I had before. I am going to slow it down tremendously because um, I have realized how important it is. And here's again, another dichotomy. I am busier again than I have been in the last year and a half. Things are picking up, I'm getting so busy. But here's what I realize is that the busier I am, the more important it is for me to have this sacred space. People tell me all the time, oh, I don't have time to slow down. I'm so busy. I don't have time to do this or that. I don't have time for myself or to meditate or, or to have a sacred space or, or to journal because I'm just so busy. My point and what I have learned is that when I have this space where I can slow down and where I, where I give myself permission to slow down and take time for myself, it does something interesting. Number one, it helps me to tap into my intuition. And when I'm tapped into my intuition, I'm immediately able to filter out what is less important in my life. And the other thing that it does, which is really weird and I can't explain it, it changes the flow of time. So in other words, when I slow down, time slows down. And as I said, I can't explain it. So when I am rushing and rushing and rushing and thinking, I've got a minimum amount of time, I've got a limited time, I've got to get this done and this done and this done, I get stressed out. My body gets worn, worn out faster, I get tired faster, and time does run out. But when I slow down and take time in my space or take time to make myself a cup of tea, a cup of chai with the whole ritual, the whole palava of the tea strainer, when I slow down, it actually slows time down. And when time is, slows down, I'm able to actually um, discern what it is I need to do next and next and next. I've actually become more effective, more efficient and more powerful. So not only have I now got time to spend in my space and I've got time to spend in my little garden talking to my cute little plants, I'm also busier than I've ever been before, like developing a sanctuary. And, and my sanctuary, by the way, I'm opening the doors again on uh, July 1 to accept new members again. We've had our doors closed while we continue to develop it, um, only taking care of our current members, but we're opening our doors again on July 1. So I'm busy creating that. And I'm also super excited. I'm starting to do events again. I have an event coming up in Sedona in December, which I'm currently working on. So I'm getting busier and busier, but the busier I am, the more important it becomes to take care of myself and take time out for myself. Um, people who have kids and, and jobs and all, they're always saying, I can't take time out for myself. I won't be able to pay the rent. On the contrary, if you don't take time out for yourself, you'll wear yourself down, you'll feel tired all the time, and you won't have the frame of mind to really deliver good work or to be more, you're, you're actually more productive when you take time out for, for yourself. So let me share with you some of the things that I have in my sacred space. And, and you know, once again, it doesn't have to be a whole room or anything. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. Um, uh, my, my wonderful assistant, Abby, is behind the scenes right now and she is going to be looking out for your questions and she will read them out to me. But let me take you a little tour around my sacred space uh, where I have, first of all, uh, let's see, let's start from here where I have my salt lamp and my beautiful uh, amethyst heart. And, and one of the things that's really important to me are fragrances and scents. So I have aromatherapy. I love this particular set, which is from Australia. And what I do is there, there are four different mixed scents and, and one of them is called Sacred Knowledge, one's called Sacred Journey, one's called um, Sacred Temple, and one's called Sacred Dreaming. And what I do is I close my eyes and I pick one 
every day and I either burn it in my um, aromatherapy burner or I just put a few drops on my wrists and rub my wrists together. I love scents. They have a way of calming me down. I love perfumes as well. So I wear aromatherapy, I wear perfumes if I'm going out in the evening. I just love, love, love fragrances. They calm me down if I have the right fragrances. And this is my little cute little altar with the Pegasus and my, um, my globe and all my little crystals. And there I have a singing bowl. And, and this interesting thing was a gift. If you've read my book, um, uh, Sensitive is the New Strong, in chapter one, I talk about a shaman who tells me that I've been absorbing other people's energies. And the shaman then clears my energy and he uses something like this. And at the end of that trip in Costa Rica where I met the shaman, the people who own the retreat gifted me this so that I could continue to keep my own energy clear. And basically, and I don't use it every day, but I love it. I keep it here as a reminder of that trip and that time with the shaman. Uh, and that's the other good thing to keep in your sacred space is just keeping things that give you fond memories so it triggers those memories. And again, these are all really useful for empaths because empaths tend to give their power away to fear and fear-based things. This brings you back into a space of love and safety and connection, connection with your higher self. So the, um, the owners of the retreat where I met the shaman, uh, they gave me this as, uh, and the way that the shaman was doing it to me was that he was doing this to clear my energy all around. And so I'm supposed to do this every day. And I have to admit, I don't remember to do it every day, but, but I just love this. So, and, you know, and I just have a relaxation space here. And under this duvet, I actually have a crystal heating pad um, which, which is really healing and great to lie on. And then I have my little desk there where I work on my journals and that's pretty much it. And, and of course I have my manda mandala or dream catcher, which we skimmed past. I forgot to show you, but again, you, you can even do it in a really, you know, just a really small space. You just need maybe even just a rug on the floor or something like that. That's all you need because the idea is just being in a place where you feel is really safe, where you can connect to your intuition. That to me is so important because what, um, uh, what empaths tend to do is that we tend to um, suppress our own intuition. We tend to distrust anything that comes from ourselves and we tend to believe everything that people who we perceive as being a higher power or a higher authority are telling us. When I say higher power, I'm not talking about the higher power here. You're, you're supposed to believe your own higher self, your own higher power, but I'm talking about higher people who you perceive like people in, uh, um, in high office in government or in uh, medicine and so on. And, and so I, the way I take it is that things that come at me from the outside is just data. It's not truth. It's not necessarily my truth. It's not necessarily what I have to listen to. It's just data. My truth and what I have to follow and the only thing I give my power to is what comes to me from my higher self or from spirit or source or whatever you want to call it. Those messages come to me when I am in silence, when I pause from the outside world. I cannot say this enough because if you only take your signals and your signs and your messages from what other people outside of you are telling you and you only do that and you don't tune in uh, um, to your higher self or your own intuition, then it leads to overwhelm, confusion, fear, stress, all of these things, burnout, all of these things. So if you can separate it and say, okay, 
I am only going to follow what my intuition tells me. And you make time to listen to your intuition. It's so important. You'll find that your intuition will help to tell you which of the information or data you're getting from the outside world serves you and which does not. It doesn't necessarily mean what people are saying are untrue, but it could serve someone else, not you. So that's what I want you to know that's super important and why for me, I design my life around being able to listen to my intuition. So now I'd love to hear if anyone has any questions or anything interesting that they so would like to share. We do have a couple questions. I had someone ask, uh, how do you cleanse your crystals and how do you use them? Okay, great question. So a couple of things I do. Number one is that selenite, which I have a lot of, is a very, very cleansing crystal. Um, I have a, a selenite wand and a small selenite tray up here, which you probably can't see from that angle. But I have a bigger selenite tray, which is not here, and which is not in this room at the moment. But what you do is you can put all your crystal stuff, your crystal jewelry and things, on a selenite tray and it actually cleanses it. That's one way. Another way is I also actually put, lay a lot of my crystals out um, by the window on a full, on full moon nights because apparently the full moon also cleanses. I also run them under running water. That also gets the dust off them and gives it a bit of a shine. Um, so you run them under uh, water under a faucet in the bathtub or something, and then put them out to dry. I also sometimes put them out in sunshine. But selenite is an extremely cleansing crystal. You can carry some with you. It, it's, it's very powerful at cleansing your own energy and your own aura, but it also cleanses other crystals. And just because someone asked, do you smudge as well? Oh, you know what? I do sometimes. And so the thing is, and I also want to say this, that when I smudge, I'm doing it just to clear the energy, which is what we're doing. We're just kind of clearing the space. Um, I also use sprays to make it easier. And I never think in terms of I'm getting rid of negative energy. I just think in terms of I'm clearing it to fill it with my energy and my higher self. Um, I. And, and this is just me. I mean, and it's totally fine whichever way you want to see it or perceive it. But personally, for me, I don't always like to think in terms of that there's negative energies around me because that puts me into this fear based. Oh, I got to clear it. I'm doing it from a place of fear of the negative. I don't do I, I don't do that. Anything that feels a little bit fear based, I kind of go, oh, OK, that feels a bit fear based. No, all I have to do is expand my own energy. And so um, when I do clearings, it really is just to clear any other residual energy here so I can fill it with source energy. And so here's some of the things I do apart from smudging. I use sprays, room sprays. This one's called Spiritual Blessings. It's got a beautiful smell. This one is rose. Um, this is a sage spray, my cheat way of smudging or saging. This one has a beautiful smell as well. It's called Crystal Clear Resonance. It's Resonate Essences. So I love using these kinds of room sprays only because I love scents and fragrances. And then a couple of people were asking in the beginning or making jokes about not having space. Can you talk about the power of having like even a little altar or something? Yes. So I know this is important uh, for me to say, and I, and I can't say this enough, because I don't want you to feel that you have to have a whole spare room. It literally can just be a corner. It could even, like literally even a corner like this, which, is, which has a very small footprint in your home, like in the corner of your bedroom or your living room is enough. And this shelf was extremely inexpensive. I don't remember where I bought it, but you can buy it online. It's extremely inexpensive and it can fit in the corner. And, uh, and if you have anything there like candles and an aromatherapy burner and a few crystals, whatever it is, and just sit by it, maybe even put a teeny little rug in front of that. That's really all you need. 
and maybe you know even sit with uh, with your journal on your lap and journal while you're next to this space it just becomes a reminder that ah this is the space i come to to unwind and why i'm suggesting even a sacred space is because um it's because when you are in all the other spaces in your home they're associated with something your bed is associated with sleep your sofa might be associated with watching tv and watching the news and stuff like that so uh, and, and your dining room your dining table is associated with eating a meal and cooking and clearing up and your kitchen is associated with cooking all these spaces have a function and a meaning in your life so what you don't realize particularly if you're highly sensitive is that when you go into each of these spaces your energy your body your energy your mind starts to gear up for what you have been doing in that space and it does that and so this is why it's important to create a little space that's very neutral for want of a better word but more than neutral it's that's sacred that's like only positive things happen here only nurturing loving things happen here and so what i cannot stress enough is that the more that you feel you cannot do it you don't have time to do it you're too tired you're too stressed your house is too small too crowded you're too frustrated whatever the more you feel all those things the more you need to do it the more that's a sign you need to do it and people always say to me you know i can't do it i live on a shoestring budget blah 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 when you do that when you say i can't do it i can't do it and you're saying i live on a shoestring budget no you're actually defending your position of not having of not of your life not being where you want it to be it's like here are the tools here are the tools here's what you need to do you need to stop even if no matter how hard it is you need to do this for yourself you need to take time out for yourself um and and so when whenever people say but i can't because blah 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 what you're doing is you're actually defending not creating the life you really want because when you create that space and then you create from that space like you create your life from being in that space you create a very different life you will notice over time that you will become more intuitive you'll be more in tune to your higher self it can lead you to become more abundant it can lead you to eventually get a bigger space but you have to start somewhere um i have had people say to me that oh your message is only for the privileged and um i can't do it because i'm too poor but the thing is do you want to climb out of that poverty my messages are available free for everybody right here and if you want to climb out of that you have to honor yourself and listen to your higher self and unless you do that you're not going to climb out of that so please stop defending your reasons for staying in that place that you don't want to be in I can't say that strongly enough. So, thank you so much. Do we have any more questions? Uh, we have a bunch of stuff going on. A bunch of people ask questions. I've got trying to figure out where to start. Um, so, one that just came up is can you tell us about your connection with angels and then that kind of ties into something someone asked earlier about they're surprised that you don't have a lot of religious iconography be it like Buddhas or Virgin Marys. So, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I do. I have a Buddha downstairs. So, I have these things all over my house. So, I have a Buddha, uh two Buddhas. I have a Buddha downstairs in the dining room and one in my little garden. Um I have the I have um Archangel Metatron symbols here and there. I so I don't discriminate. I believe in anything that calls to me. And angels call to me. and um uh, i have um a medallion of uh, our lady of guadalupe now to me our lady of guadalupe the energy feels very similar uh between guadalupe and the virgin mary and kuan yin i believe that these could be the same soul incarnated into different uh 
into different bodies at different time periods. So I'm very fluid, I'm very religious and spiritual fluid in that sense because I feel I have a direct connection with um, spirit that talks to me all the time. Sometimes I don't listen, that's when I burn out. <laughs> But they do talk to me all the time. They never let me down. And, um, and I try not to put a label on what it is, but I hear them all the time. So basically the sacred space kind of spills out to the rest of the house as well. It does. Yeah. The, the sacred space does spill out to the rest of the house. I like to consider my whole house sacred. I really do because I, I do put things into it that I love. So my whole house is sacred. But even within the house, there is this space because, you know, we do have to watch TV sometimes. So we do that from the living room. And yeah, so um, I do have to work and follow social media. And I do that from my little office space. But even my office has little angels and, and uh, things there to remind me of the other side. No space in my house does not have something to connect me to the other side. I have crystals all over the house. I wear crystals every day. <laughs> and then someone asked, uh, they said they never know what to journal. Do you have any prompts or like, what do you usually journal about? Okay, so that is a really great question. So I'm gonna tell you uh, something that I have not shared here before. This is the first time ever. What I share in my journal is the first thing I write is I open with where my energy level is at. And so, um, what I do is every day I tune in. So I have explained this before in a previous video where I speak about, and it's also in my book, Sensitive is the New Strong, where I speak about how if you were a smartphone and your battery was dying, if your battery was in red, you'd be freaking out and you'd be charging your battery. But as a person, as a human being, and as an empath, and as someone who is a giver, uh, many empaths are, you tend to not watch your own battery levels and you tend to allow yourself to completely run out of steam. I won't allow myself to do that anymore. And so one of the first things I write in my journal before I start is I turn inward and I ask myself, if I'm a battery right now, where is my charge level? Is it at 50%? Is it at 60%? And so that's the first thing I write down. What do I think it is today? And if it's low and if yesterday was higher, I then ask myself, what has happened between yesterday and today that's depleted my energy? And so I write that. This is what's happened. And so it, it, it really brings clarity to me. Oh, I did this, this, this. I start to recall. What did I do? So then the next thing I do is I t ask spirit, okay, what do I need to do? to charge my battery, to bring that level up. And then I start writing that. And when I write that, that part seems to feel almost like automatic writing. It seems to be something that spirit is telling me, you need to do this. This is what, and, and what I feel is I get guidance even on food and I don't always follow it. And, uh, but like, for example, spirit has been telling me for the longest time that I need to cut down my intake of sugar. Um, and those of you that know me know I love desserts. I have a sweet tooth. I, I love chocolate, but I really have had to cut back because apparently the sugar contributed to my burnout. And so, so I write everything down that comes through to me. And sometimes it's about, oh, you need to exercise more, but you need to do yin type of exercises. What is yin exercises? Yin exercises are what triggers the parasympathetic, which means that, and so yang exercises, which trigger the, the sympathetic, are exercises like, like running, dancing, boxing, like really gets you worn, you know, that gets you tired. But yin exercises are more like yoga, pilates, qigong, stretching. Those are not heavy exertion, but they are, they are creating flow in your body. So something that spirit has been telling me for the longest time is I need to increase my yin exercises. So I listen to all those and I write it down. And again, I am not always obeying it. 
Um, my discipline isn't always 100%, but it's good to know. It's good to know that, okay, this is what spirit wants me to do. So now I'm going to start to make time to do this. So basically, that's the kind of stuff I journal about. Um, so I hope that helps you. And then I'm going to go with one more question, and it's it's a big one. Um, someone asked, what do you do when you're facing uh, disbelief or like, how do you connect when you're, you're hitting a blockade of like I'm trying to, uh, I don't remember their phrasing exactly, but yeah, when you're hitting a spiritual, like can't move past this block of disbelief, I guess. Okay. So if you are feeling going through a stage of complete, like you lost all your faith in all of spirituality and everything, what I would suggest, and, and I'll tell you something, if that's what it is, the question is, you're not alone because during this COVID time, a lot of people have been going through that. And I'll tell you, so let me start by telling you why a lot of people are feeling that and see if that fits in with the person who asked the question. But uh, why a lot of people are feeling that is because we have been bombarded for the last year and a half with extreme fear-based messages that threaten our lives. And um, prior to that, it, there's never been anything like this before. Prior to that, even if you watched the news, even though there was a lot of fear, even if you watched the ads for um, pharmaceuticals, which are all instilled with fear, these pharma ads, one in three people will get cancer and, and take this product and one of the side effects is death. So. Um, so even if you watched all those things which have been around for years, um, you, there was still, it was still, death was not imminent for you. It was not something you were dealing with right here and right now. And so you could do things to mitigate that. But already there was enough fear that was being fed to us by the news media, by the pharmaceuticals and so on. But in the last year and a half or so, it has escalated to a proportion that is beyond what I believe that the human um, psyche can, can healthily handle. I really believe that. And it has completely derailed us. It has had us living in this space of fight or flight continuously for a year and a half. And so where we feel that we are potentially walking time bombs. This is what has been instilled in us, that you may die of COVID. You may infect someone else who may die of COVID. Your very existence is a threat. This is the message that we have been getting. This message is extremely unhealthy, extremely unhealthy. My personal belief, and you don't have to believe it if you don't want to, and you know, you're entitled to your own, my personal belief is that a lot of the deaths have been caused because of the fear of COVID and the stress that it's brought on to our bodies and the way we have been living during this time. My personal belief is that the situation was made worse by the way the media and the pharmaceuticals have handled it. That's my personal belief because I spent this whole year and a half tuning in tuning in and building up my own health reserves and taking care of my body and taking vitamin D and eating more healthily. I chose to go a different way. That was me. I'm not about telling you how you should do it and everybody has the right to believe in whatever they want and do what works for their body. Um, I still respect people's views. I still wore a mask when I went out for other people, not for me. I didn't feel I needed to, but, uh, but I wore it because I didn't want to freak people out. Um, having said all that, we have been in this war, like it's the same, what we're suffering now is PTSD basically. It's like being in a battle, in a war for a year and a half. And if it were up to me, I would have handled it very, very differently. If I had a cocoon where people could come into my cocoon, they would be marinated in a very different reality where they would not have lost their faith in spirituality or the belief in spirit. It is because you have been living this way. It has severed your own belief and your own connection. 
So what I would suggest you do, if this is the case for you, I would suggest you start immersing yourself in everything that again confirms that all those beliefs you had about the other side, about spirit, um, start immersing yourself in beliefs that confirm this to be true. So you do that by watching videos like, number one, stop watching the things that sever your connection. Stop watching the news. Stop watching all the pharma stuff. Um, stop watching all and listening to all that. And if you're going to defend watching it, that's on you. I'm telling you how to connect back to the other side. Um, so um, what, what you then do, and then number two, is you start immersing yourself in the works of people that talk about this. Immerse yourself in my videos and my books that teach you your connection. I would recommend someone like Lee Harris, for example, amazing guy, channels spirit. Immerse yourself in his work and John Holland, Colette Baron reed any of these people. There are a whole bunch of videos on um, Amazon Prime right now as well that are on the, the other side, on the afterlife, on intuition and things like that. Go look them up. Um, watch stuff like that and watch stuff where people are... And because, because you've been brainwashed to think that... Um, uh, like one of the things that pharmaceuticals and the government does is it presents you with a very narrow view of science and then tells you this is science. Anything outside of this is la 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 or woo woo or whatever. They give you a very narrow view. What I want you to do is watch stuff that says we have scientifically proven this to be true and it's outside of the narrow view of governments and, pharma and the big pharma industry. So I want you to watch and there is a lot of it out there when you look. So please immerse yourself in that and keep doing it and keep cutting out the, the government propaganda, the pharmaceutical propaganda until you get back to a place of trusting. So that would be my advice to you. All right. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, love you guys. And um, if you want to stay in touch with what's going on in my life, with the opening of the sanctuary or with my Sedona event, my real live event in Sedona, please subscribe to my newsletter. Please continue to watch my videos. Please click like if you're on YouTube right now. Please hit subscribe to my YouTube channel and click like. Thank you so much. Love you guys and see you soon.